Have you ever thought to yourself, 3D printing is pretty cool, but I could use a little snack. The Coco Press is finally on sale. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you like 3D printing in stuff other than plastic, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. And hey, we like plastic around here too. But do you remember back a couple of months ago, and almost a year ago now, where we talked with Ellie from Coco Press all about the latest machine to come out from Coco Press, their first actual commercial machine available for purchase at an affordable price. Ellie said soon, TM. Well, that soon TM is today. You can pick up a Coco Press for the low price of $1,500. And if you've ever had a problem getting 3D printing past your significant other because they say it has no practical value, the Coco Press might sweeten that deal a little bit. See, printing with plastic is quite a bit of fun, but after the love is gone, you might find yourself looking for something sweet. So jumping over to the Boogie Wonderland, that is Coco Press, is, uh, well, pretty darn awesome, if I do say so myself. And while it does look like a V0, and, um, that's probably because quite a few of the people from the Voron team actually assisted Ellie in making this thing come to life, including... Jason from LDO and the entire LDO team, uh, Trident 300 coming soon, TM. Get subscribed if you guys want to see me put together a Trident that has five colors. No one told me how bad that was going to be until after I had decided that we were doing five colors, so, um, I'm sorry. But I have really enjoyed this entire process, watching Ellie start with a product that the original one was actually on Linus Tech Tips, regardless of what you feel about LTT given the current news cycle around them, it didn't go so well. And a lot of that is due to just shipping being shipping. But I've actually had some 3D printed chocolate for a long time. The air here in Tampa is best described as soup. It is roughly 80% ambient humidity outside and well above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And that means that shipping chocolate can be a bit of a problem. So I offered to be, um, let's say a drug mule and get the finest drugs that Ellie has to offer in the form of chocolate. See, there were bonbons here. Those are gone. They're not 3D printed anyways, but the Happy New Year is actually printed in white chocolate on a milk chocolate bar. I never ate it because it's just really cool to look at. And at the recent Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival, we got a couple of Benchies and, uh, well, unfortunately shipping didn't, it didn't, didn't go so well, but it happens. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. That one's on me. And Ellie has kind of always been a shining star to me in this industry. She has just been committed to making chocolate printing not only viable, but also affordable. A few other content creators have looked at other chocolate systems and they all kind of suck. Like, proper suck. See, this is where somebody that understands how all of this stuff works matters so much because you can literally get the chocolate cartridge body and nozzles for relatively cheap. You can get a 0.8 millimeter or a 1.6 should you actually need it. I mean, you're looking at what? About a hundred bucks for a barrel and a nozzle. Having spares, especially if this is the industry you want to play in, will matter a ton. And you might say, Grant, why the heck would I want one of these machines? And I would answer, why the heck don't you? Who doesn't want to just have a 3D printer that makes you chocolate whenever you want? And if that is a chocolate boat, then hey, let it be a chocolate boat, but don't toss it into your backpack and then do a, a couple thousand mile plane flight, forget about it, and then throw your backpack onto the bed when you get home because your benchy will get broken. But you know, it still tastes good. And that's the great thing about chocolate 3D printing because um, if it fails, it's still yummy. Literally the yummiest fails out there and we have it on good authority. In fact, it has been peer reviewed that gyroid infill does taste the best. Why? Math. And while you could viably make your own chocolate, Coco Press actually sells the 
cores, as they call them, of chocolate. Each tube of chocolate is about 65 grams and will result in about 65 grams of 3D printing. How far does that get you? It all kind of depends on your line width, your nozzle, and layer height, right? It's all about volumetric flow. But 65 grams is more than enough to get at least a couple of benchies. You get 10 of those 65 gram cores for 49 US dollars, available in milk, dark, or fake chocolate, otherwise known as white chocolate. And if you are a custom bakery, or you are a small mom and pop shop that is looking for something that not only looks stinking cool in your shop, but also provides you with the ability to make something custom relatively fast, look no further than the cocoa press. Ellie herself has been well devoted to this industry for quite some time. And pure devotion, if you will. And really even having one heck of a resume. Ellie has even been on BattleBots, which any geek out there, if you know what BattleBots is, you know you want to be on that show. It's freaking BattleBots. How can you not like BattleBots? Less than a decade after starting Coco Press, which was started in 2014, Ellie is finally here with a product that the average... 3D printer user can start to afford. While yes, 1500 is pretty expensive, when you realize it's built upon a V0 Voron, it's really not that bad. It's pretty awesome. This is just kind of a personal thing, but I love that Ellie made her own custom colors a filament to print the parts out of. See, you can get a Cocoa Press kit and you need to make your own parts, or you can actually buy the 3D printed parts already done for $200 or up to 250 if you do want to go ahead and have those heat set inserts. Ellie went through the effort of making her own filament, something that we're going to be going through very soon. Actually, at the same facility, Ellie is getting her filament made with printed solid. How do you know that, Grant? Well, it's because I subscribed to the printed solid monthly subscription box and a couple of months ago, we got some colors that are Cocoa Press. Let me go get them, let me show you. I love the Jesse Filament subscription box because it lets us really look at new colors. And uh, one month we got some Cocoa Press Brown and some Cocoa Press Red. And the colors are pretty awesome. And while it's not the Cocoa Press Orange, would love to get some of that. It is still something that you can go ahead and purchase. So if you do want to keep the colors the way they should be, you absolutely can. And uh, I, I love that subscription box. And if you don't have one, maybe you should look at getting one because uh, you might be getting a cool custom color coming up the next couple of months. You know, maybe. And I will say that having seen the Cocoa Press printer in action, and in fact, a good friend of the channel, Pez Liz, we'll link to her Twitch channel in the description down below. She has been working on a Cocoa Press as she is one of the beta testers, which is really awesome to kind of know someone who's been involved with working on it because it lets you see that Ellie actually cares and is putting the printers not only in the hands of experts that have been doing it for decades that actually wrote the manuals to build the machine, but also end users that have value in understanding the way this process works. Because, uh, spoiler alert, it's not that easy to build a 3D printer from a nut and bolt kit especially if you don't have great instructions. And I will tell you, instructions will make or break a printing experience. It's why I love to build the Prusa kits from scratch because they're just so much fun to build. If you do want to see us do some more videos on kit printers, let me know. And uh, let me know some printers that you'd like to see on the channel in the comments below. Because as we look to do more live streaming content coming up in October, I am excited to be able to show things off, including a Cocoa Press. We were back our number 57 when Ellie opened up the pre-orders. And uh, I cannot wait to get a Cocoa Press in here. And yes, I have no valid reason other than I want one. And I want to support an awesome person who I call my friend. And Grant, you might say, how am I going to use the Cocoa Press? This is what I love about open source. Ellie has already got Cocoa Press built in to Prusa Slicer under other vendors. So if you are going to pick up a Cocoa Press, know that you already have profiles 
ready to go so that you can use your printer as soon as you're done assembling it. This is only scratching the surface as to what's possible with chocolate 3D printing. And I'm really excited to get hours and start testing the boundaries of what is functionally possible. Ellie has done some absolutely astounding things with these machines, and I look forward to see what comes out of Coco Press next. This is a big deal, and anybody that is an entrepreneur, especially one that is doing a hardware project, knows how difficult it can be to get across that finish line. So if nothing else, Ellie, congratulations, you made it. You and your team made this happen. And I wanna thank you guys from the bottom of my heart because I've wanted something like this simply because I love chocolate, I love 3D printing, and you know what? If I'm ever gonna go show 3D printing to a client, why would I take a regular printer? when I could take a chocolate printer. You wanna talk about leaving an impact with somebody's business? Print them their logo out of chocolate when you go and meet with them. Guys, let me know what you think of Coco Press in those comments down below. I am excited to get mine. Are you going to get one? Do you think that there's a value for this in the industry? And do you believe that printing food is going to catch on, not just chocolate? in general. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. Links to buy a Coco Press are in that description down below. And uh, Ellie, congratulations. You and your team have freaking done it. It is not easy. Seriously. We're going to have to have Ellie come on the podcast and talk about what it was like getting this product across the finish line. So stay tuned for that. It's the first time Ellie's probably hearing about it as well. So, uh, Ellie, you know how to reach me. Let's talk. Anyways, stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Yes, tomorrow's Earth, Wind, and Fire Day. Yes, I've been making Earth, Wind, and Fire references throughout the entire episode. How many did I make? Let me know in the comments below. Have a good one. Get some boogie wonderland. No. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And if you are feeling especially chocolatey, you can support us financially using the links in the description down below for as little as $1 a month to help us make these videos possible. At the $5 tune higher, you get your name listed right next to me with some other awesome people that make videos like this possible. And hey, at the $10 tier and higher, get to come hang out in our private Discord server where we actually discussed doing this video. Here's some behind the scenes. I am holding up a record with a $20,000 3D scanner. Because it was the closest thing that I had. Anyways, right below me will be our previous interview with Ellie at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest. And next to that will be our interview with Ellie from the East Coast Rep Rap Festival. Don't worry, there's going to be another one coming this year. So stay tuned for that. I will see you all down in the comments and in the next one. Take care.